Jackson, and the five story comes meant for Microphone mixed clouds yeah, with copper head. Not working? Yeah, how's it now? All right. Happy morning to all of you. Very excited to see all of you. So welcome to my session, uh, Enterprise Storage Management for Mixed Clouds with Copperhead. My name is Parshuram Halur. Uh, I work in Copperhead Development Engineering as a principal software engineer. With me, I have Vura, who is a consultant software engineer, uh, works uh, as a part of the Copperhead del solution delivery team. And we have a Copperhead uh, partner from Intel, Kurt Bruns. So I uh, have broken out this session in uh, three parts. Uh, I'll run you through the uh, worry of the Copperhead, and uh, we'll see how Copperhead can be uh, used in a mixed cloud environment. Then uh, this being the OpenStack Summit, we'll look uh, more details into how Copperhead uh, OpenStack interoperates together. Then uh, in the middle, uh, we have the demo from Kurt Bruns uh, for one of the solution we have with the OpenStack. Then towards the end, you know, I will explain you about uh, the Copperhead community, how you can get started, how you can be part of the Copperhead community, and what's the what what's coming up in the Copperhead, so and so forth. Having said, let's move on. Yeah, let me ask this question. So, 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 how many of you have heard of Copperhead? That's pretty awesome. A good number of people. So, what's what's Copperhead is all about? Right, so it's a open source SDS controller that discovers, pools, automates the management of a heterogeneous storage ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we were in the one of the keynote sessions, right? Uh, Jonathan mentioned uh, there's a user code saying that OpenStack is all about providing the flexible framework for the compute, network, and storage. Copperhead is no different. So it, it provides the flexible framework for storage. Look at the wide variety of uh, storage management it provides, starting from EMC storage systems, VMAX, Extreme IO, VNX, et cetera, to NetApp, IBM, SDS, whatnot, right? Uh, so all of this heterogeneous storage system is being managed uh, with an intelligent layer, which is called a storage automation. It basically has uh, two abstractions which are built within the copperhead. It's, it's called the virtual storage array and the virtual storage pool. The virtual storage array is all about where do I, my storage is coming from. You know, your storage, uh, physical storage could be spanning across multiple data centers, or your physical storage could be spanning across single data center. With virtual storage array, you define where I pick the physical storage from, right? The next thing is virtual storage pool. It's basically, uh, Copperhead lets a way to define your storage tidings. You have various application workloads running. They could be you know, mission critical workloads or you know, very least uh, uh, non-mission critical workloads. For mission critical workloads, you would want to you know, have the high performance storage. For non-mission critical workloads, you would just have the low performance storage. Copperhead lets you define all of those things with a way of defining the virtual storage pool. Uh, you could mention the kind of storage you would require. Uh, do you need the replication? Do you need the data production? All of those things can be you know, defined in the virtual storage pool. So these are the two things you, know, you basically uh, define when you want to use a Copperhead to manage a heterogeneous storage ecosystem. Okay? Going up the layer, uh, Copperhead enables all of these services through a self-service catalog, which I would call as a shrink-wrapped service catalogs. Uh, you would want to create a volume and then you know, be able to give it a host. You would want to create a volume and then be want to be able to create a data store out of it and then give it to the ASX data store. So all of these things, they are available as a just blueprints. You just click them and make use of them in a very minimal number of clicks. Yeah? Uh, Copperhead is you know, a very open and extensible platform. It provides a rich set of uh, REST APIs, uh, which you could use uh, for your management application to integrate with. It's not that all. You also have the various SDKs from Java, Ruby, and Python. Based on the languages which your management applications are being written, you could choose to pick the SDK which you are interested in so that you, know, you can integrate with uh, the management applications which you are using. Right? Now, we, so, so, so we, we, are, we are in the uh, era of uh, clouds. 
the applications which are you know coming latest into the market, they have to be able to you know adhere to the workloads which can be you know used in the cloud. So in that sense, you know it basically provides the multi-tenant and multi-site management through Copperhead. Yeah. So with all of this intelligence built in within the Copperhead, it makes the storage and factor management agile and efficient. Moving on, how uh, Copperhead can be used in a mixed clouds. Now, uh, as I said, you know, we are in Rafa clouds, right? Uh, it's right from my side to say that every CIO in the industry has their own cloud story. If he does not have the cloud story, probably his job would be shaking, right? Do you all agree with that? Yeah? So let's take an example of a, an organization who already has a hmm, private cloud may be built out of using the uh, VMware, right? Now, a CIO comes up with a requirement saying that, hey, I want to have a public cloud as well, but I have a budget requirements in terms of uh, my storage expenses. I don't want to you know, add up uh, uh, more budgets for the storage. I would like to use the same storage and then be able to build the public cloud. So the problem statement here is using the same storage infrastructure, uh, he wants to build the, uh, he wants to have the private cloud running and then he wants to have the public cloud running. And maybe for the public cloud, you know, he makes a decision to use the open stack, right? So in order to do this, there has to be orchestration layer which understand all of your storage infrastructure and which can at the same time intercept with the leading cloud stacks like OpenStack, VMware, and Microsoft. So by being able to intercept with all the leading cloud stack available, Copperhead is, you know, providing a flexible choice, you know, you can choose whichever platform you want to deploy your public cloud, right? So, so it basically has a plugins for VMware, for, for VCO and VRO, and for OpenStack. So we will get into the details of in what kind of integrations we have OpenStack, and uh, it has a plugin for the Microsoft SVM as well. It's not that all, you know, we are continuously, you know, evolving and then adding up the plugins for more platforms. Uh, we have developed the integration with the Flocker, which is basically storage management for doc, uh, dockerized containers. Yeah, I, and the Kubernetes is coming up as well in the in the in the, in the future. And this is where the you know, opportunity for you all to contribute. You know, maybe if you are looking to use uh, some new platform, uh, some leading cloud stack which is available in the market, you know, you could as well build the plugin for the Copperhead and contribute to the Copperhead. The community can use it, and you can use it. Well, so, so getting into the uh, uh, more uh, details about you know, how Copperhead and OpenStack can interoperate together. There are three ways you know, Copperhead and OpenStack work together. Uh, the first one being is Copperhead as a single driver, which is you know, typically similar to writing a single driver for a physical storage. Then the second one is uh, Cinder itself can be used as a Copperhead driver which enables the usage of the Cinder in the non-OpenStack environments. We have a latest addition to the, uh, 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 the list of solutions, which is a direct support for OpenStack compatible API within Copperhead. It basically enables the uh, storage orchestration for OpenStack. So we'll, we, we have the demo for this. Uh, Kurt will run the demo for you guys. So this, this is our first operating, uh, uh, Copperhead as a Cinder driver, as I mentioned, it's uh, Python driver, it's it's like uh, you know any driver which is being uh, written for uh, any one of the physical vendors, right? Uh, what we offer with the Copperhead driver is that uh, it has a FC driver, iSCSI driver, and then the scalar driver through a single Copperhead driver. Yeah. Um, now we support all of the core volume operations like create, delete, attach, detach. Uh, expand, you know, snapshot, volume clone, and then the snapshot clone, okay? So uh, you, you might ask me a question saying that, hey, I have a drivers from all of the storage systems which are available in the market, you know, why would I need the driver from for Copperhead as well, okay? Uh, so I have an answer for that. Now, when you are using the Copperhead driver in OpenStack environment, you get the manageability of all of the storage systems which are being supported in Copperhead through a single driver. That way you are just getting away with adding the configuration in Cinder.configuration for 
n number of storage systems you would want to manage in your environment. You just have a one driver, and you just have a single configuration being written into Cinder dot configuration. So that is just a lot of your life, right? You know, when you want to configure a new Cinder driver, I mean, it's 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 a manual uh, Cinder dot uh, edit, so it's very you know error prone. So as well, you know, you just you know go with putting up the single driver information in the Cinder dot configuration. So it, it, it's pretty awesome, right? Now. It's not only that, you know, there are quite a lot number of features which are built within Copperhead, like uh, you would be able to pick up the uh, port based on the performance. When I say the port based on the performance, the I.O. which is running uh, on the particular storage port. So Copperhead has an intelligence built within to pick the uh, least loaded port from the storage system, okay, which you get uh, when you're using the Copperhead driver. And you also get the uh, quite a, a, a rich set of features like high availability and disaster recovery, which you would get with the Plex manageability in Copperhead. As you know, these products are evolving. Cinder is evolving. Copperhead is evolving. There are quite a number of features which are getting added, right? So in that sense, you know, QoS replications, we still have to support, and a couple more features which are coming on the Cinder, so we still have to support in the Copperhead driver. And it's, it's being approved for the end release, and we are going to be upstream uh, in end release. So where do you use this kind of uh, you know, solution, typically in, in, in our traditional OpenStack deployments? Uh, the second solution, so Cinder itself can be used as a copperhead driver. It's, it's, it's you know, I would say, quite reverse to the solution which we looked at first, where um, Cinder was consuming the copperhead. Here, copperhead is consuming the cinder. So here, uh, copperhead emulates as a Nova, which acts as a client uh, for cinder. What it essentially enables is to uh, do the storage provisioning to the non-open stack, heterogeneous compute, I would say. I mean, you want to give a volumes to ESX, or you want to give a volumes to a standalone, standalone host, and you want to give a volumes to you know, OpenStack. So it, it, it basically you know, enables OpenStack as well as you know, non-OpenStack heterogeneous compute host storage provisioning. Right? The way it is being built is uh, uh, by having a limited OpenStack installation. So when I say limited OpenStack installation, uh, we have bundled uh, appliance just having Keystone and Cinder service. You know, Cinder is to you know, get the manageability of all the drivers which are being present with the Cinder, and Keystone is for uh, authentication and authorization, because you know, all of the OpenStack services rely on the core service, which is a keystone for the authentication and authorization, which we would need. Right? Now, uh, typically, you would use this kind of a solution when you want to get the expanded uh, manageability of uh, third-party area systems in <laughs> Copperhead and you know, to, get, to, to have the non-OpenStack compute uh, storage provisioning. Yeah, this is the you know, latest addition uh, to our offering with the Copperhead and OpenStack, uh, which we call it a SOFO. It's a storage orchestration for OpenStack. This essentially is providing a, a Java implementation of a block storage API. So what it enables is, it, it kind of looks like uh, the first solution which we looked at, let, you know, which is a northbound integration with the, with the Copperhead. So this is also northbound integration, but this is a new choice which you can use. When I say new choice, if you're looking for a similar kind of a solution which Cinder has, you could use Copperhead there. So you just you know keep the Cinder aside, use the Copperhead itself as a Cinder. Yeah, uh, and we, we, we have implemented uh, support for the uh, Cinder API version v1 and v2, and uh, we have a very clo close tight integration with the Keystone. So that's again you know to leverage all of the authorization and authentication features which comes with the Keystone. And we are supporting the key, V2 version of the Keystone, right? So typically, you would use this solution when you, know, when you want to use the direct block storage API within Copperhead. And you know, when you want to use uh, you know, inbuilt HA, it's it just the indicative list of features I have given here, inbuilt HA. I mean, with this, you, know, you are getting all of the rich features which are being built within the Copperhead. So when I say inbuilt HA, so if you have to build the HA for Cinder, you know, you have to do, uh, I mean, it, it takes uh, more time to deploy the HA configuration for Cinder, but when you are using the Copperhead, it just uh, deployment of a Copperhead instance, you, you are getting the HA inbuilt. 
I think uh, with that, you know, I'll hand over to Kurt Bruns. He will run the demo for Copper and Sofo. Thanks. Thanks, Parash. Yeah. All right. Let's bring this up here. Yeah. Onto the right screen. It's there. All right, cool. So like Parash said, um, when you want to use this is for you have existing storage in your environment that's being supported by Copperhead, and you want to bring in OpenStack, like a fresh install of OpenStack, and you want to continue using Copperhead as your management control plane for all your storage, um, this is where you would use uh, the SOFO environment. So I know you guys didn't want to see me type live, so I recorded this demo. And we have a fresh OpenStack install. Um, it's running DevStack. So you know, if it works in DevStack, it's going to work everywhere. And uh, first thing we have to do, I'm going to show you that all the services are coming from this node, the 192.168.100.5. So you can see both the volume one and volume two services are coming from DevStack. So now we log into Copperhead. It's already been prov provisioned with some storage assets, providers, uh, virtual assets, virtual arrays. And now we want to add Keystone as our service or our authentication provider. So all we need to do is point it at the Keystone instance inside DevStack. And there's an option to bring in all of the projects and tenants that Keystone currently knows about. So right here, I'm adding Keystone uh, IP. And now you can see we check this box here. It says automatic registration and tenant mapping. What this will do, will call into Keystone as the admin, because that's the credentials I provided for the password. And it'll bring in every project, every tenant that OpenStack knows about. Now, if you're familiar with DevStack, at the beginning it only has a few projects and tenants. But it'll uh, ingest all of those automatically. And so then those will be available in Copperhead, so then you can provision storage against those tenants. So there's the call out to tell you what I just told you. So now we've added it um, into Keystone. And now we want to uh, show you here all those got ingested. The provider tenant is the default one that's inside uh, Copperhead. So now we have a couple of virtual arrays already set up, but we want to dedicate some storage just for OpenStack. And so what Prash was talking about, if you're not familiar with Copperhead, um, it has the, you basically aggregate several storage systems into a virtual array. And that's to provide um, kind of separation of storage. And so you can uh, dedicate storage for certain tenants. And that way, you separate. You're using multiple backends, but you can kind of aggregate them together and then separate them based on policies for who gets access to them. So in this case, we're doing five arrays. We're bringing in VNX block systems to this virtual array. I think I hit pause again. So now we have one dedicated for OpenStack. And now we create a block virtual pool, which is more of a quality of service or class of service for the storage in your systems. And since this is OpenStack, we're going to give it platinum. Gold and silver are so outdated. So we select the virtual array OpenStack. That's where it's going to be available. The protocol iSCSI is all that's available in these arrays um, and solid state drives. If you notice, it says four matching pools, but we brought in five systems. The reason is it's done. It's figured out that there's only four storage systems available that have SSDs in them. The other one doesn't have SSDs, so the scheduler will know, hey, I can't schedule on that fifth system. It doesn't have SSDs in it. So then we go down and look at the storage pools that it discovered. These are physical pools, and it says they all have SSDs. The schedule knows it can then schedule on these. Now we've set up storage. We've set up a virtual array, a virtual pool, specifically for OpenStack. So now we can go back into OpenStack. We'll log out here and log back in to show that the services for the block storage provisioning are now pointing to Copperhead. So you can see the IP address has changed. That's when we integrated with Keystone to say, when you want to provision block storage, you can go ahead and use Copperhead. 
Now we go into a volume creation. I'm going to use the demo project under the admin. Create a simple volume here, and you'll see when it comes up with volume types and it asks about the availability zone, you'll see that it shows the platinum and the OpenStack that we set up before. And notice the gold and silver weren't available to it because we didn't provision um, those tenants to be able to access that. So now this is creating a volume on those backends that we ingested into that virtual array out of that virtual pool. So it's an SSD backed volume. You can see that you go into the volume types, which we then um, suck in some of the parameters based on the virtual pool, and you can see the drive type of SSD. We switch back over to Copperhead, and we can go to the resources, volumes, and you can see that it's created not in the provider tenant, because that's not where we gave it access, but we gave it access to the OpenStack demo tenant, and there's our demo volume. So it's only available in the OpenStack demo if you went to, say, the OpenStack admin project, it would not be available there. And that was when we selected the pull down in the Horizon dashboard for the demo. So that's the end of the demo, but um, I just want to reiterate what happened there. So we created storage specifically for OpenStack. We brought in five arrays into a virtual array. Um, so we consolidated, aggregated them together. Then we created a virtual pool. Um, these are all um, semantics for Copperhead, right? And then out of that pool, we specifically said this is an SSD pool, allowed access to that for the OpenStack tenant. And then we were able to create a volume in the OpenStack dashboard. So using Horizon, we were able to create that, uh, create that volume, and we could see it in both uh, the Horizon dashboard as well as Copperhead. Find my mouse. So this is just an outline of what we just went through. And then uh, now I'm going to let uh, Parash, are you going to talk about the back since Tokyo, what's happened? Yeah. So this 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 just you know, give a worry of uh, the talk we did it in uh, Tokyo OpenStack Summit. Uh, how you can manage uh, using the both northbound uh, uh, solution as well as the southbound solution. We looked at the two offerings, right? The first one, Copperhead as a Cinder driver, and then Cinder as a Copperhead driver. You would essentially be, you know, make use of those two solutions, two solutions in combination, and then be able to provide the use cases like high availability and then disaster recovery by making use of the Viplex, Cinder, and any of the supported storage system, Copperhead. Right. For more details, you can just you know look at to the YouTube link which I have provided over here. Thank you. Over to you, Ura. Yeah. Hello. Oh, these guys are really paying attention. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing, yes. So what, there's one thing, I may, for, I, I may forget to say everything I'm supposed to say here today. There's one thing you have to remember, I would like everybody bring out your phones right now or your laptops, open up your browser and go to copperhead.org. Because that's really going to be everything I'm about to say, but in a thing, and then you can look, look at it later. Okay, so um, this is kind of like the landing page for the community. From here, you can access everything uh, that we have to offer uh, in terms of documentation, um, how to use it, how to download it, how to build it. Uh, if you just want to download it to use it, you're not interested in building it, that's fine too. You can get the links from here. Um, on the right, you're going to see the weekly community meetings. And in the weekly community meetings, um, we do them in HipChat, kind of like an IRC. Um, but it's um, a lot of companies don't let people 
go into IRC, and HipChat was the one that kind of every company involved at the time was allowed to, to, to access. Um, and, and that's all there. Now, the important part is on the, the Get Help section, um, you have links to the Google Groups, so that's like all the mailing lists, etc. the HipChat, um, the FAQs, and the videos. So the videos will point you to YouTube, where there's a whole bunch of videos, and eventually this will be in that video. So if you're looking at it there, and it's kind of like a weird loop around high. Um, so in terms of getting information, just remember, copperhead.org. OK, how do we change? So now we need to make this visible. Yes. Ooh. So what's been the story of Copperhead so far? Uh, Copperhead became a project basically a year ago next week, I think, is when we came out. We came out the first week of May of 2015. Um, since then, we've had two dev summits, um, developer kind of like this, you know, uh, with all the developers getting together here in the US. And we had two in India and one in China. And we've been able to go up to about 150 um, people, contributors, uh, giving, giving, giving code. Um, we currently have Intel and OSU, which is Oregon State University, acting um, very, they're very active in the community right now. And there's about seven universities in India also in the process of uh, helping out. It used to be that in the beginning, we just released Viper controller. It was a single node. Um, it was this EMC thing that we sold. And now we have the Copperhead community, which has everything that Viper had, yes, but it's not just an EMC thing. You know, you've got EMC, you've got Intel, working with Oregon State. We've got our repositories out in the, in the open. And we are currently in talks with other companies um, to see how we can all collaborate. Because at the end of the day, no customer will ever want to be just an EMC shop or an HP shop or an IBM shop or a NetApp shop. They're going to want to have a little bit of everything. Because otherwise, you've got this problem of uh, vendor lock-in. That's kind of the driver behind why Viper became Copperhead. Because I we realized that, yeah, it's kind of weird to tell other companies to just work with these other companies. Like, it's harder. But if there's an online community, that's not an EMC thing. It's just Copperhead. Um, that's where we would like to end up. And that's where we would like to be. And Intel is, is with us in, in that idea. As of right now, here's a little map of the world where all the different contributions have been coming from. Um, you can see, uh, because you know Intel is a multinational company, and so is EMC, um, and then all the different universities all over the world. Uh, we have some universities in China we're currently talking to as well. Um, so it's, it's gaining steam. Um, and, and most importantly, it's in that initial stage where there's a lot of excitement and a lot of possibility. And we can go, essentially, you can have a very big impact into the direction of Copperhead and therefore Viper um, on the back end um, going forward by being a part of this. And our current work with the OpenStack community um, is, is part of that, right? I mean, we don't want to 
we're all in this in the same in the same thing and there's a lot of extra functionality that you can get by just using Copperhead under the covers and just you know letting them letting Copperhead do all the all the storage side things. Um, so if you have any questions, we're gonna be here. There's a raffle that I'm supposed to give away tickets and the tickets are coming. And Alexa is here. Sorry, Echo is here, but you call her Alexa. Yeah, we'll that in for sure. And I go. Can I ask? If you ask questions, you get an extra ticket. No, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, please use the microphones. Um, actually, I have uh, three questions all interrelated. If you can go back to the first slide with Copper HD as sender. This one? So yeah, uh, no, not the so far. Two slides before. You this. find it. Copper HD as the sender driver. Two more to the back. Yes. So uh, if my understanding is correct, if this is the solution meant for an OpenStack cloud that is already there and where you bring in a new storage solution. So if this is the way to go, so I see the three dots. So I understand that would be the world of other storage solutions that come in. But the understanding is they would have to provide a Copper HD plugin for it to play in this space. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, we have a bunch of them. Yes. So is there a certification process that goes with that, or is that oh. completely? Yes, one of the big yeah one of the big projects this last year was the what we call the Southbound SDK project, which is precisely that. It's it's a, a very good, simple, ready-made process for doing that for, for, for if you are interested in making mm -hmm. a plugin that's a direct Viper plugin, uh, sorry, Copperhead plugin, you know, I'm supposed to pay five bucks. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, if, I, if, if I, you know, I have my own, my new Echo, I wanna, wanna make it available to, to Viper, I use this SDK and I can, I can do that. And okay. then you just work with the community and yeah. So and that has all the options, the Java, the Ruby, Python, I mean, is, I, I don't know what. I think it does, right? Yeah. So because it, it's all RESTful. Yes. It's RESTful, OK. Yeah. And if there's a second option, the one after this, which is Cinder as the Copper HD. This so one? This one. So this is not for the pure OpenStack play. Is that correct? Yeah, well, you, know, you could use in the OpenStack as well as you know, in non-OpenStack environments. OK. So, so how does this keep up with the OpenStack version? So does it lag behind a version or two? Because this would mean there is a, uh, an active Copper HD development that has to go. So which means uh, it's one version behind OpenStack uh, we, we current? We make sure you know, we are compatible with at least the uh, two versions of OpenStack. Uh, so right now, it's compatible with the Kilo and Liberty. Okay. So right now, we have the Mitaka. So that part is going to be done in the next version, next release of Copperhead or in the Okay, and, and here it would be any generic storage. There is no, there is no active yeah. development on the part of the, the storage vendors to play in this. Yeah, because the idea was, you know, let's say there's, there's someone out there that wants to use Copperhead and they want to use some specific piece of hardware that Copperhead does not yet support, but OpenStack does support it and mm -hmm. has a, a driver for it. Then by yes. using just a generic OpenStack based Cinder library, um, to connect to it, uh, then, then yeah, we could support it um, up to whatever functionality OpenStack supports mm -hmm. through that driver. Okay. Um, and then the, the benefit of, of it being on the open source side is that, um, yes, it may be that it's available in the next release, but you can always just get the latest code that may already have it. So we'll get it much faster. Um, as, as, you know, as Mitaka comes out, then we can work on it really quickly and and get it in in a week or two or three or four, but not yeah. months. <laughs> um, so Thank you know you. that's that's the benefit there. Let's go to the other microphone. Okay. Thanks. Uh, you are referring in many cases to Cinder and block storage. Do you plan integration with the Manila-like and files file share management as well with Copper HD? Yes, um, I believe so. Right, because we already do a lot of the file stuff, um, so it makes sense for us to also integrate with Manila. Yeah, so, so we have that in the old map, so probably we would uh, be creating the blueprint for the next release for Manila driver of a Copperhead. Thank you. And I, I imagine it will work similarly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I understand that Copperhead basically is the, 
the Viper code base turned into an open source license, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Um, so the question is, will now be Viper basically uh, a result of new Copperhead versions and you will build proprietary versions of, of Copperhead t as your, your own product? So it's, it, does this one work too? Okay, yeah. good. Um, so it's the idea of, there's the open source product and then with the Viper version, um, you get like support and like, you know, like Fedora and, 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 and Red Hat. Okay, let, let me rephrase the question. Okay. I, I mean, I um, think to answer your question, anything which is part of a corporate is going to be part of the Viper controller as well. Okay. So what kind of governance model do you have and what are the requirements for me to contribute code to Copperhead? Sure. Um, so there's a, so, okay. So to go into the governance, um, we have a technical steering committee made up of people from EMC, Intel, OSU, the different organizations. Um, and there's a whole or, or, uh, government uh, document that explains the whole thing, a whole page on the, on the website, copperhead.org, remember that. Um, in terms of contributing, um, it's pretty lightweight. Um, there's, there's a, you know, you, uh, what I would recommend is come to the Wednesday meeting, the, the weekly meeting, kind of get to get in, get in there, say hi, you know, I'm here, or, or send a message to the Google group. To, to clarify, do you need to contribute yeah. a license agreement or can I just submit right. code or? Go ahead. Developer certificate of origin, right? Certificate of so origin. Okay, signed off by, that's all you need. Like okay. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. one little file. That's it. Yeah, to keep your answer short, just get hold of Kurt Bruns. They are actively yeah. contributing already in the community <laughs> and you get all the answers. Very nice. Thanks. Other microphone first. Hi, thank you for the presentation. So for Copper HD, there are two legs. One, OpenStack-based solutions to be part of. The other is non-OpenStack solutions to be part of. In, in both cases, in your partnerships, there are no OpenStack distro vendors or operating system vendors to be participating in this effort. Meaning, if this thing to fly, it has to be part of and verify with the OpenStack distro vendor on the other side, or operating system yep. vendor, right? Are you guys partnering with Canonical or Microsoft? I'm not naming Red Hat, obviously right. they, will, they will milk down the we're looking for Ink Tank acquisition. Yep. That's definitely part of the, of the process that, that we're, we're looking into. We've talked to some of the distribution people. Um, nobody, I mean, we're, we're, we're working on it. I mean, the, the community is open to working with anyone and everyone who wants to help out and, and be a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's up definitely on the you know, roadmap, but I can't give the uh, dates when we would get there. Yes, we are going to be part of the distros. Because we don't know them. <laughs> it's not because they're secret. So when I last looked at the roadmap, you went only up to the next release. What's going to happen further down after the next six months for Copperhead? We'll make another one. Um, well, that, that's part of what's being figured out, right? We've only been here for like, a year. Um, so that's what the technical steering committee is going to do. And, and basically, so a lot of people have a lot of ideas of a lot of things we could be doing. And based on the community, what the community wants to work on, that's how we figure out what will be on the next release. So when can we expect to see an extended timeline and about well, we could, your roadmap? We could bring that up and we say, hey, we need more than just one. Right. There's also, I mean, there are, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. There's part of the Copperhead.org. There's a Jira board, uh, and there's roadmaps in there. So there's design specs that people right. are submitting, and so you can see what's been approved for the next release, what's coming up. Um, we don't have a single foil that captures all of that, but it's all in the open. Right, and 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 through Jira, you can basically see all the the things that haven't been incorporated are the candidates for the next one, right? And if you want one, you can make one. You can say, hey, I would like it to do this, mm -hmm. um, and you could do it yourself too. It's great. Yeah, so there are a couple of pages on the Copperhead Wiki. One is like unapproved designs. Then ah, you have okay. a approved design for the forthcoming releases. So you could actually look into those pages. You would get you know, what is coming up and you know, what is actually planned for the particular release of Copperhead. Okay. Right. Thank you. And again, copperhead.org will take you to the <laughs> wiki. You have everything. Um, for uh, non-EMC storage vendors, if they want to get uh, started with uh, Copper HD, where do we start? Talk to us. Um, we'll get you in there. <laughs> okay. um, no. So basically, it's the same thing. We, we, we talk at the um, weekly meetings. 
get the technical steering committee working with you, and we just start working on it. There's the southbound SDK, which is was made specifically to help this. So I would, if, if it's some specific array, hey, we have this array, we want to make it work with, with Copperhead, um, you would come in and I'd say, okay, let's, let's get you talking to this guy, because he was the guy who implemented the southbound SDK, and he would help you, and we'd go from there. Okay, sounds good. It would be very easy. Thanks. Um, speaking of the storage backend, so far I only see yeah, the, the big commercial vendors, but what if I would like to use um, some kind of free or open source storage solution as the backend? Do you have any drivers or modules in that respect, or do I need to buy some big storage silo in order to use No, the no, they're, they're coming. We're working on it. I mean, Ceph is, is, is we're in the process of doing that. Um, and again, it, it's a community thing, so. Well, the question is, is there something already available or is this currently being worked on and will be available? Right, available. There's a brand, there's a. So there is an active pull request out there of Ceph support in Copperhead. Ceph, okay. So it's not merged and master yet, but um, it's in the design, well, it's in the pull request review process. So they're doing code reviews, making small changes, but okay. definitely a, a Ceph driver exists. Okay. And you can download it. I, I have a Vagrant environment that has Ceph support with it. Okay. Yeah, I won't extend it too long. Uh, to cut, uh, in your SOFA demo or so, uh, you did not show about the HF features, right? Like, you know, there is a, you create virtual pool out of uh, four VNX boxes. Correct. Yeah. So do you do the HA in the, on the virtual pool or you have an implicit dependency on the underlying storage? Yeah, so um, there's a couple pieces of HA, right? So there's Copperhead HA. So typically Copperhead, in, in my demo, it's a single node installation, but uh, Copperhead has HA integrated and you do a three or five node installation to make sure that you maintain quorum and the raft algorithm, all that. Um, but yeah, the, the HA for Copperhead comes from there. Um, but then the back end systems that they have HA as well, right? They would, they would, that's kind of under the, under the control plane area. Um, I just set it up in the lab. Um, so far so good, but um, <laughs> why the insistence on using IP addresses and not DNS for everything? It's kind of awkward. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh yeah I mean something wait, to work on yeah yeah I mean it literally errors out if I put in a DNS address why can't it just resolve it yeah <laughs> good <laughs> good feedback yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> it's life so you know. so are there I'm follow up with his question are the drivers then uh, if, for example if I'm want a highly resilient uh, storage solution are the drivers multi path drivers uh, how do you handle is that all under the covers of, of copper head? How does that work? For multipath support? Mm -hmm. So if okay, so let's say you have a, a host and you have a switch and the arrays and you've got enough cabling and to, to do that. Um, in the declaration of the vpool, where you're saying what kind of storage you want, you can specify I want a minimum of two paths and a maximum of four, or you could say minimum two, maximum two, and that you're guaranteed two. Okay. You can play with that. So it's in the in the details. Got it. And it just yeah, right. it'll do it for you. Any other questions? They're waiting no. for the echo. The next question is: Are you going to give away that echo? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for those questions. Here, sir, you you pull it because then it's weird, you know. <laughs> What? No. <laughs> okay, that, that was strange. Okay, ma'am, would you please come here and pull the number? <laughs> you already put yours in, right? You're not going to do anything weird like that guy. Yeah, I'm just mixing it here. Okay. It's gonna, will it be weird if it's yours? That's going to be so weird. So, number 970, which probably everybody, so nobody's excited. Four, a little more excited. Six, Super excited now, because there's like 10 of you ne left. <laughs> Two. Oh. There it is. OK. Wow. You are the proud owner of uh, Echo device, but call her Alexa, because she won't listen to you otherwise. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, copperhead.org. Ah, and if you go to a summit, you get a cool shirt like this. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>